I see right here on CBS News, so it must be true, that, quote, users have long been frustrated by discrepancies when sending messages between Apple and non-Apple products, including lower media quality, diminished editing capabilities, and even different colors for the messages themselves, end quote. I had not uh, been aware of that frustration, though I am admittedly a little bit slow on understanding technology products. Uh, is there indeed a consumer harm underlying all this stuff? And is antitrust law the way to address it? Right. So obviously, um, referencing the green text bubbles as the justification for an antitrust action um, is flatly ridiculous. Uh, I associate myself just this once with a tweet by Ben Dreyfus, uh, who noted this weekend that he um, this has made him a libertarian. This this is the moment. The uh, green text is an antitrust violation is the thing that made him a libertarian. And he correctly notes that what Apple owes to Android users is nothing because they are not its customers. And I think that that is a really uh, it's a pretty legit point. Um, Nick, first of all, and Ben, ben Drive is you should associate more than just once and has been a secret libertarian for a long time. But oh, yeah. um, uh, you are an Android user. Um, and you're also, yes. uh, uh, first Unlike of all, Catherine, you... who is just an Android. Yes. Good. Uh, oh, bravo. Good looking out on you. Can you, uh, Nick, can you tell us, uh, can you do, give us a brief commercial for Androids? Uh, I don't really understand what they are. Yeah, they are uh, <laughs> for the same money. They're cheaper and you get a much better phone with more capabilities. Uh, the one thing I want to point out to Merrick Garland, who Ooh. is an idiot, is that. Look in the camera and point. I am. I'm trying to. I'm not sure where the camera is now. Matt. You know, there there are cameras all over my apartment. Like I'm an never Android sure user. which one is on. Uh, no, but the uh, you know on the Android system, I have a, uh, uh, a Samsung phone. Uh, you know, on the Verizon network, my text bubbles are green, and I am happy to have them as green. So the idea. Um, I really don't know a single person who gives a flying fuck about what color a text bubble is, and I don't care. Uh, you know, that I could pay more money to get an iPhone. This, I mean, it's just, it's an absurd uh, case and it exemplifies everything that is wrong with Joe Biden's approach to the economy. I suspect we'll be talking about other minions in his administration uh, later in the show, but this is the type of thing. Apple has a 60% market share in the United States for smartphones. Um, and, uh, you know, globally, Android phones are bigger. Uh, and more use. This is a such a nothing burger. And if your attorney general is focusing on stuff like this, they are just being anti-capitalist or they have some bone to pick um, that is not quite visible or is the actual cause of action here. This is absurd and it should it should cause a mass defection from everybody who's not an idiot when it comes to supporting somebody like Merrick Garland or for that matter, Joe Biden. Um, Peter, just to counter Mr. Gillespie here. Uh, uh, Dr. The, the, Gillespie. Dr. Gillespie here. There has been a lot of what have been called conservatives. <laughs> this is literally a headline I read this morning of, uh, <sighs> of people who like uh, Lena Khan uh, because uh, there, there's an in increased national conservative uh, interest in antitrust and, and uh, using the, the big stick against uh, Silicon Valley. Google has also come under uh, some antitrust uh, excitements under the Biden administration. If I'm not correct, a little bit on the Trump administration as well. Is uh, laissez-faire America becoming more like dirigist Europe these days, Peter? Well, to start with, I just want to say that while I'm not a conservative, I do think the wrath of Khan is mm -hmm. the best Star Trek film. And I, I'm a, a con Terry. No, yeah. I, I don't yeah, I don't have that. Um, I think uh, another thing You're I think here- You're a real con. You're a contrarian. That's right there, <laughs> That's guys. That's it. I'm a con, contrarian. A oh, my goodness. Thank you, Catherine, as always. Thank the you, best Nick, editor here. There is a real sense in which the United States is following Europe's lead here. Europe has passed a whole bunch of tech regulations. And what you see with a, with a lot of them is that they fly under the, you know, the banner of, you know, we're going to help consumers. This is just about making the market more fair and more competitive. But what they're actually doing is just giving bureaucrats the power to play product designer. And that is exactly what is happening here with the Biden administration suit against Apple. They've decided that they don't like how Apple has designed their products. 
That is the core contention here. Oh, Apple, wait, you should, uh, your iMessage should be, uh, it, it, should, it should work, um, it, it should have exactly the same capabilities when it, you're talking to Google users. It's just it's it's incredibly petty small ball stuff, uh, and and I mean like it it seems to work from the presumption you know this is a little bit of an exaggeration but that like the green bubble is something like a human right you know like DoorDash it's not I mean don't be crazy here right it's it's just kind of nutty there's a there was a an exchange uh, in an NPR report on this that I thought was really telling. So you've got the the host who's asking NPR tech correspondent Derek Kerr about, uh, you know, what the what the, the harms are here. He says, well, you know, so the Justice Department has given the example of, you know, you might not get that green bubble if you're not on the iPhone. So how else has Apple made the user experience worse for other people? And the tech correspondent for NPR responds, well, you know, iMessage in iPhone is a good example. If you're not an iPhone user, you're basically locked out of having a fun experience because you will not see those fun stickers like the heart or the thumbs up. And remember, this is the world that young people live in. Justice Department says when Apple designs its products this way, it's basically locking people into the iPhone family. The hearts and the stickers and the green bubble, they're, they're making a federal case out of that. It's just bonkers. I also Catherine, love... they should make the federal case out of you can't plug in the, your your headphones anymore, right? That's. I like, mean, whatever you we... say, Grandpa. You, in fact, no. can. You just need the dongle. By a little adapter. Um, no, I mean, the thing that blows my mind about this is that there are people from the Justice Department, from the FTC, they are looking straight into the camera and just saying the Microsoft case was a huge success and we're going to do it again, right? So this is this is a wild historical counterfactual like the idea that somehow antitrust action gave us the competitive ecosystem that we have today in terms of technology is is just flatly untrue um a mostly idea... failed antitrust action to be clear right and you know the idea that uh that this is you know as peter said the idea that this is like worthy of the attention of uh you know this level of details worthy of the attention of uh um Kind of what will end up being a, you know, billions of dollars of uh, of the great legal minds of our government. Um, I listen to the Motley Fool podcast sometimes uh, because I'm attempting to be a little bit less stupid about the markets. And um, what they said about this this morning, I thought was pretty good. Which was they just said, "Hey, Apple's going to make this go away with money and time." Um, and Apple has a lot of money. They just have a ton of money laying around uh, as a general matter. And um, that what the real cost will be is that they're going to be distracted by this extremely complex, extremely expensive, extremely lengthy, lengthy uh, regulatory action. And um, they're not going to they're going to be less innovative. And that that's a huge problem for this company, which, you know, customers expect a certain amount of uh, whiz bang innovation, I guess. Um, I would certainly like to see the next cool thing that Apple is doing and not have them be distracted by this. Um, you know, this is this is like a very, very, very direct illustration of the trade-offs that this type of, of antitrust action or other regulatory interference has, which is that a lot of smart people at this company spent this whole week and many months before and will spend many years after worrying about you know, what Jonathan Cantor has to say instead of how to make the next cool thing that's going to make our lives better. We should talk just a little bit more about that Microsoft comparison, because if you go back to the Microsoft case, the Justice Department's argument was that Microsoft had uh, basically a monopoly on desktop soft OS software and had used that monopoly to push their own internet browser, Microsoft Explorer. At the time, they had about 80 percent of the market. Apple has in the United States about 60, 65 percent of the smartphone market. So that's a that's a big share. But what the Justice Department has done is that they've made up a kind of a fake stat where Apple has 70 percent of the I can't they remember call it, the, it's like the fancy schmancy. Yes, smartphone it's category. the elite phone or the, the business <laughs> phone. But yes, that is exactly what it is. There is, the fancy there phone is a, category. a further element of this, which is cultural. And I, I'll I'll explain it to you apple users people who use apple products and i have an ipad and I, you know my first uh one of my first big jobs out of uh, college was actually working on an early mac system for the publisher of mac user etc but 
Apple people think the whole world exists in Apple universe and that, you know, everybody is desperate to be an Apple user, et cetera. And nobody fucking cares. If you like Apple products, you buy Apple products. If you don't, you buy Android, you buy, you know, Google, you buy Windows, et cetera. Uh, and you buy things, uh, you know, even uh, Kindle, uh, which is its own version of, of an Android operating system and things like that. This is such a high functioning market where where winners and losers are pretty fluid. They go up and down. There's a lot of innovation. And to you know to uh, kind of underscore Peter's point, if 60 percent of the U.S. smartphone market for Apple is enough to trigger some kind of antitrust action, uh, Windows still has a 55% market share of computers, of, of PC, you know, of, of desktop and notebook computers. So then this means the next action will be another case against Microsoft, which nobody is pretending is dominating and, and destroying markets, you know, through its monopoly power. I mean, these are functioning markets. And if, if, you know, they, if Merrick Garland is going after this kind of stuff, it's just like, it's a sign of just absolute stupidity. That was a clip from the latest episode of the Reason Roundtable. To watch another clip, click here. To watch the whole episode, click here. And make sure to subscribe to the Reason Roundtable. You'll be glad you did.